Hey, welcome back, Acron fans! And we are back with the third game, day three of the cast for the Acron 2012 Christmas Tournament. I'm your host, Shadow 33 and let's go over what's happened thus far. So, we have had a game between Ferreter and Cron Aberrant, which involved a lot of chronoboarding, a lot of nice, really nice plays with chronoboarding and base movement and all that. And then a game between Rock Mox and Cron Aberrant, which is very short. Showed off the frightening power of a Grecom All-In Rush, and it's going to give me a lot to think about. But today, or not today, but right now we're going to be going over Vermind versus Haiku. The last match of round two of the loser's bracket. Whoever wins that will be fighting against Ferreter in order to get a chance at fighting Rothmox for a chance to get back in the tournament and win completely. So, we will see that right now. We are on Cold Forge, by the way, and Vermind is going, starting out as Vec Gear, which I have not really seen on Cold Forge. That actually looks kind of nice, too, actually, on this, too. Huh. And he is fighting against Haiku, who is going for CISO. So neither play going for Grekum, despite popular opinion that Grekum is the strongest race on this map, or species, rather. Neither player is going for Grekum. This should be interesting to watch, see which how this works out. So both players... Well, Haiku went for a couple RPs, but it's hard to tell if he's going for beyond that. Vermind is not going for any sort of Zion Pulsar all-in, and on a map like this, that may be a bad idea. This is a small, this is a wide map, but the distance between the starting points is quite small. So you can see there's only this valley here, where granted, everyone can see what's passing through. So the only way to get through without being spotted is fairly long. But that's assuming your opponent cares about being spotted. If they don't, then... You might have something to worry about pretty quickly. Haiku, on the other hand, is... Looks like he's getting a fairly quick proxy base planned out. Moving towards this rear section here, right to the west side of Vermine's base, that might... No, he's at... Wait, he's aborted that. Never mind. He is, in fact, building three RPs. Probably will build an importer and build a factory from there. Yeah, there's the importer. So, if he builds a factory, it might be a proxy factory, but it doesn't look like he's going for anything particularly all-in. While Vermind, back up about 30 seconds up from there, getting another RP, he's really going heavily for economy. I'm not sure why he is doing that. As I mentioned before, version 1.3 does not reward massive economic spending early in the game as well as version 1.2 did. At least not in most maps, and particularly not in this one. So I'm not sure what's going on here. It looks like... Ah, interesting. So Haiku is actually healing up the Spire. I'm not sure if that's intentional. No, it is definitely intentional. He is... He is healing up the Spire, just trying to make sure that he knows exactly what's going on around here. Probably not planning to take this base. Probably just wants to make sure that it's harder for Vermine to get rid of that Spire and to hide any proxies or anything like that from him. Not a bad idea, but probably not the best use of his Special Ops time. And it looks like, regardless, the Special Ops is actually going to stay back at base, to fend off the Veers that are coming in here. Should be able to do that without problem. Shin Veer and Tethvir both dying. So this scout will likely be echoed out. I don't think Vermind will commit to this. And also actually... Wait, hold on a sec. Haiku is 30 seconds down from here. His forces are up here and... From his point of view, has destroyed the... Oh, I see. That's what happened. He didn't mean to heal that up. He just did. Okay, so the healing up looks like it was probably an accident. Further in the past, he does kill it. So he probably just right-clicked it, assuming it would kill the thing, and instead heal it up, because these spires are actually allied. All these white buildings are allied. The two domes here are enemies, naturally, but all these buildings are al the white buildings are allied to all the players, and it probably didn't quite realize that. And this is an interesting choice. He's throwing a fact- no, an armory in an importer. Okay, good. I was worried you threw a factory in an importer up here, but it looks like he's going- is he going for a mass imagery? I think he's going for a mass imagery strategy. With the importers he has, getting more special ups... Yeah, he's going for infantry. He might get a factory later on, but it looks like he is definitely focused on the infantry. While Vermine, which I haven't been paying attention to much, since he's basically been just getting RPs his entire game, has not been attacked. You know what? This might actually pay off. If Vermine's not getting attacked, he would have a chance to get out of this, and if he gets enough Zion Pulsers, that alone would be enough to get rid of the infantry. Or <laughs> Shin Turch is even better. And yeah, he's going very heavily for economy. Now finally getting a deep with a 343 mark. This is really surprising. And Haiku getting attacked a bit by 
Vermine, but really is not doing too much damage. And it looks like there really isn't much that... Yeah, so Haiku has gotten rid of that Spire, by the way. So he has signaled possibly he's trying to take this expansion. But other than that, really, Vermine might actually make this work. Or Haiku might actually allow it to work, to be more precise. But Haiku is going back here. He probably gonna, is probably going to build a factory over here. Proxy factory. That will be very useful for getting in here. But he is very focused on building a lot of infantry. And on a map like this, it's not a bad idea. As I mentioned before, there are a lot of infantry-only paths around this section in the back here, around these high mountainous areas behind that lead to behind the bases. The vehicle-only sections are the majority in the middle of the map, but there are a lot of outside sections where infantry will actually be able to shine. Should, so this should be interesting. That can't have happened. I don't think Haiku actually... No, Haiku managed to defend against that. He is probably going to lose one of the RPs... No, he's not. Never mind. The special Ops will be distracting these guys just in time. Losing one of the Special Ops, it's not a big deal compared to getting rid of the Shin Veers. Or Shin Veer and Teth Veer that Haiku has. Sorry, that Vermine has only these starting units. He has not built anything else up until about the four minute mark. And maybe not even then. So, Haiku, not sure if he's gonna, what he's going to do with this. The only thing that comes to mind is a strategy he ran a long time ago. I think it was Haiku that ran this. Where he would get a ton of infantry. Four or five armies producing infantry, get slingshots, three slingshots outside of the opponent's base, and then just slingshot infantry straight into the middle of their base and rip them to shreds. I don't imagine this will work out though, just because the cost of gate tech is so high, and for the amount of time you need to invest in it, you still need to have something to get you to the mid game because it's a very late game strategy. It's a it's a it's a fort breaking strategy, but it's not one that you're going to be using this early in the game. So I'm not sure what exactly he's planning on doing with all those infantry. I'm also not sure why Vermind has not bothered to build up any more vehicles. He apparently he's still going... Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. Apparently he's still going for... RPs, if this Zion Veer's movement is any indication. Getting rid of the Spire. And Haiku will be... Haiku will eventually... Will, he will ultimately get rid of these Shin Veer and Teth Veer, losing one of the special up in the process. No, not even losing that. Saving that special lob just the last second. So, really, it's just a matter of Vermine. Why is he not building vehicles now? I do not understand why he's not building any vehicles. He is getting another Shin Veer, but other than that, I don't know what his motivations are. Haiku now moving in from the from behind as well. With a special ops and marine attacking the resource processors that are completely undefended, by the way. There is nothing there is a Zion Pulsar coming up, but that's about it. I mean, this is 160 liquid crystal being destroyed. This, even the infantry die, they have paid for themselves four times over. Already. Not to mention the amount of income lost by losing this. So, Vermind, really not sure why he is dawdling on getting vehicles. He probably is going to be getting vehicles much faster now. No, he's not. He is not undoing any of this. But he probably will try to get his Zion Pulsar as soon as he can. From the Zion viewer from the looks of it. Yes, yeah, going back to help defend with this. This should work. So he for some reason decided to jump back with that, but his only real hope is to get these is to get the Zion Pulsar out very quickly with the Zion Veer, which he's not doing. Why is he not doing that? Why did he not use the Zion Veer to build a Zion Pulsar? He needs to do that. He needs to do that in order to get out of this. Because that Shin Veer cannot defend against special ops. Even with foundation support, it cannot defend against special ops. And really, Haiku at this point has kind of been letting, really been letting Vermine go. He's not been building factories, not been building a lot of aggressive units. And Zion Pulse are finally up. And it looks like the, the resource processors managed to survive, but still losing a Shin Veer that was not necessary to lose. He could have just turned the Zion Veer into a Zion Pulse and built another Zion Veer afterwards. And this is. This is still an odd game. Haiku is really not pushing as hard as he could be. I don't know if he just wants to go for infantry because he figures he can. Finally getting a factory at the 6 minute mark. This is extremely late. But finally getting one. And Vermind as well getting a ton of vehicles now. He does have the economy to support a large number of vehicles. Which is something that he was just allowed to get away with more than anything. This is not a safe strategy by any stretch of the imagination. Especially on Cold Forged. I really don't know what Haiku's ultimate plan is. Unless he is, in fact, going for that slingshot strategy, which is the only thing that comes to mind. He is getting a lot of infantry, but they don't they don't last long enough to make it really worth it. 
getting a Lancer as well. That might work in a second factory. So both players... I don't know if those are gentlemen's agreement beforehand or if they're just still playing from 1.2 thinking. But really, they're both just lucky the other one didn't decide to go for an early all-in rush because neither of them would have survived. At any rate, they do have sufficient defenses to deal with this now. And that will be something we'll see how it pans out once the match gets to that point. But for now... Actually, once Magic gets to that point, is right now, the infantry coming in for Haiku are getting torn to shreds by Zion Pulsers, and Zion Churcher hasn't been built up quite yet, but it's going to come up soon enough. And where is that... this infantry here. Where's that Lancer? There's a Lancer being built up here. Almost done. By Haiku's point of view, it will be done. So Haiku attacking from multiple fronts from the looks of it. However, even with that, I don't know. Attacking from behind with the infantry, and attacking from the front with a very small force, I guess, to make... No, Vermind will not be fooled. Vermind sees that the attack has been cancelled, at least for now. And... Vermind definitely has the defenses for it. He could use an aerial control center. He can't afford air units right now. But... As it stands... Oh yeah, I guess Special Ops accidentally healing the Spire. It is an allied unit. And, let's see here. Ah, Haiku trying to build a Macrofab. He does have the resources for it. As he does have many, many, many RPs. Because as I mentioned before, the RPs are more expensive, but they actually are more powerful individually. So with this many RPs, both players are being able to get a lot of resources built up. But like I said, this was, this was allowed. This is not the way the game would play if there was any real pressure going on. So the choice of strategy surprises me. But at least it makes for a slightly different game. I will grant that. It is most certainly different. If not textbook. And how do you actually manage to harass quite a bit with this Lancer back, back here? Vermine's imagery, however... Sorry, Vermine's... Not imagery. Haiku's imagery. Apparently trying to use these teleporters here for the slingshot tactic, but it's not going to work. These domes will be too much to deal with. I'm surprised he's not trying to do, use the ones in the southwest. And instead he's going for the ones in the northeast, which are further away. And further away from his main infantry production... well, main production center. Surprising enough, he hasn't destroyed this comm center either. I, Vermine's completely aware of all what's going on. Like, Vermine knows exactly what Haiku's doing here. There's no secrets. Like, that is shared vision. So Vermine's aware of what's happening here, too. Like, Haiku is not hiding anything he's up to. And Vermine, as we can see, is moving towards that. A bit surprised. I mean, this would be perfect timing to send in the Zion Pulsers. Like, he doesn't have tele skip teleport on them, but it'd be perfect timing to use it. And... Oh, he does have um, two of them. Never mind. But yes, it would be perfect timing to... It would have been perfect timing at the time. But now they've teleported into the base, but being very rapidly destroyed by the forces that were already in place or rapidly skip teleporting back to defend no real harm done very little economic damage done but nothing major Vermine not using the resources he has though he has both players have quite a lot in the bank neither player using it as well as they could be which is rather disappointing and it looks like uh, Haiku building up a macrofab so he will be building stuff from that probably more tanks but honestly I have no idea he's not been playing at all typical right now so, to expect Mar tanks would probably be foolish, really. And Vermine trying to do what he can, getting rid of one of the importers. Not sure if he knows where both of them are. They're the only hidden units, or only hidden buildings, really, at this point. Like I said, Haiku is showing off everything. I think he's now gotten wise to this fact. No, the Marine's not killing this comm center. I don't understand why. And another importer being built, but Haiku fully aware of this. Sorry, Haiku living it fully aware for Vermine. Vermine grabbing this ACC here, but like I said, Vermine does not have to pay for scouting in this game. He's getting, he's getting free scouting this entire game. And I don't understand why Haiku has not stopped this. I mean, sure, if he destroys the comm center, it does signal he's doing something here. But it's better to signal you're doing something and have your opponent not know what that is and try to scout and possibly waste units than to leave it in the open. There might as well not be Fog of War in this game, honestly. It's really like the players are playing without Fog of War. As you can see, Vermine taking advantage of this, taking out one of the importers with Zion Pulsers, 
Well, he will be further in the future, but Haiku, like I said, leaving is completely open. Vermine knows exactly what's going on. He can get rid of one of the factories, get rid of one of the importers. This is when he's going for the importers, by the way, but still, he can obliterate, he knows exactly what Haiku has in his base and can just destroy it with impunity. I think the only import he doesn't know about is the one up here. But really, Haiku has not kept himself hidden very well at all. And Akron is, a, is definitely a game of information warfare. Giving all this away is just... is not wise at all. Even the Lancers here to defend, it's that's gonna help. That's definitely gonna help out. But the Zion Turcher here could get rid of them without much issue. Zion Pulse is the target of the Importer. We'll still be able to destroy it. That gets rid of one of the reserves. Haiku still has this one up here, but... and one Importer up there. But even with that, this is very difficult to deal with. And the Zion Turcher as well. Actually, Zion Beard on its own. Not even Zion Turcher. Zion Beard getting rid of the Lancer without much issue. Actually, that's good to know, because I kept recommending Lancers as defense. But you need more than... You need a few Lancers for it to really work. But Lancers with ATHCs would work actually very well in this case. Still, Vermind just using the information he was given for free. Getting Gaytech as well on top of this. So free skip teleport. And Shin... Okay, seriously, this has been... This has been the most bizarre game ever. If When players start using Shin Pulsers, although I wish this wasn't the case, but when players start using Shin Pulsers, you know something's up. Shin Pulsers are not used at all, ever. I wish they were used more often, but they aren't. But they're being used now, and that's pleasantly surprising. Though indicative of how much this game does not reflect the metagame at all. Anyway, Vermind getting tripped up on a couple turrets and Martanks as well. This is the only thing that Haiku really has going from this Macropab and Martanks that Verma is not aware of. Well, wasn't aware of. He is now. Most definitely is what is now. Getting rid of the defense turrets as they're building up too. That's massive waste of resources. Like, there is not much... I mean, there's really not much going for Haiku at the moment, except that Verma did spend a lot of money on gate tech that is not spent on units. But even then, he still has units to deal with what's here. He still has Teth Pulsers to deal with the Frigate. The Shin Pulsar can just do whatever. The Zion Church surprisingly hasn't been used much. I don't know why Vermin has not used that at all, but it is... This is... Well, from here I can see... I can see a Haiku building up from here. More Martanks Frigates. Possibly a Heavy Cruiser. Probably Blackbird, actually. And then Vermin... There's the Slipgate. So here's the Chronoport. Going for a big Chronoport attack to just finish off everything that Haiku had in the Unplayable Past. And here we go. Not even hiding the Uppercut, by the way. And just getting rid of these Macro Paths before they even do anything. This this is it. Haiku has basically lost the game. This Martang will go down in too much of a hurry for it to be much use. Second Macro Path will be going down before it builds up. And of course, this is when... Zion Pulsar is ripping apart the top part of the base. Yeah, this this is the game. Haiku might be able to win if he, or might be able to live, I should say, if he gets out of this, just focuses on this section where Vermine's not at all aware of it. But, yeah, Haiku's lost this base over to the west. It's gone. It's completely gone. It's gone where he can't do anything about it. And it looks like Vermind not building much more. He doesn't have any resources in his main base left. He needs to invest in this area, the infantry only area. Possibly break down this comm center and invest in the east side base. Because that is one thing Haiku has had over him most of this game, is an economic advantage. Even though Vermind used the information advantage he had to great effect. Absolutely wonderful effect. But it may not have been enough. And it looks like from here, I don't know why he destroyed that dome early in the past, but Still, getting rid of that, that's somewhat helpful. But yeah, this comm center, if there's anything that lost Haiku the game, it was this comm center and not destroying it. Now, why Vermin has not focused on this, I think he might not just not have the chrono energy for it. I think that's the only real reason he hasn't focused on it much. Lack of chrono energy and not multitasking well enough. That's the only thing that comes to mind. Also, why is he not attacking the rest of this base? Why is he not finishing this off? He got rid of the macrofabs, but another macrofab is being built up along with the defense turret. Vermine needs to get rid of this. What is Vermine paying attention to that is so important? Oh, getting two Shin Turchers. Not important enough. He could still focus on this. He could still destroy this while getting those Shin Turchers. 
However, Zion Church are dealing quite a bit of economic damage. Getting rid of everything in the main base, by the way. A factory being built up to try to deal with it. Probably going to get an HHC. I hate to that. It's probably going to get an HHC with it. Use that to get rid of the Zion Churcher finally. Or at least try. But really, at this point, Vermind is just not moving. And that's the only reason why Haiku has a chance, is that he's not moving this army to finish off the base. Just get rid of everything here. And allowing Haiku to get a Chrono Porter, this is extremely scary. Haiku getting a Chrono Porter might actually give him a bit of a chance. Getting Blackbirds, like I said, and getting his own comm center as well, just in case anything comes up from the north. But really, I just don't get what Vermind is focusing on. Oh, he's focusing on this expansion, but still, even with that... There we go, now he's moving his forces forward. Finally getting them up to attack and deal with this base here. In no time at all, by the way. This will be completely gone. This area will be the only one that exists left, and Haiku, well aware enough to see that this defense turret is here, be able to get rid of that. Probably doesn't know about the Chrono Porter, and Haiku has not used it yet. He doesn't have his Blackbird up to use it yet. He has the QP to use it, but nothing much else. And no slingshots either. He has the requisite tech, but he doesn't have the slingshots. And losing one of his armies, actually losing all of his armies, he has... This army's main base is going to go down fairly quickly, and the army over in the side base is now down. His only army left is up inaccessible to the northwest. And now Chrono pointing back a Blackbird to try to heal up. Haiku's going to do what he can, but I don't know what he's going to work with here. The Blackbird alone could deal a bit of damage, but not nearly enough. But he's probably going to try to send it over here, heal stuff up, maybe deal some damage. And... No. What? Oh, I, is the Blackbird distracted, or...? It appears the Blackbird is distracted, unfortunately. Did not use the Chrono Porter completely. Not sure what happened there. But Vermind, however, appears to be Chrono Porting back these... Well, he was Chrono Porting by the Shin Churches, I thought. He must have been. There's a Chrono Porter back now, and we haven't seen them come up yet. But yeah, there's really not much that Haiku can do at this point. Vermind's has lost over his Shin Pulsar, which was his main commander, which does mean commanding everything is going to be a bit harder. And now the Blackbird getting Chrono Porter back properly. Haiku might have been just delaying that to make sure it happened at the unplayable past edge, so it was harder for Vermind to deal with, but right now this Blackbird... Blackbird taking a bit of damage before Chrono Porter, but we'll be able to heal up in time from itself, by the way. No, never mind. This is happening after the Blackbird Chrono Port, so what we're seeing right now is not really what's going to happen. Not necessarily, anyway. Not with this iteration of the Blackbird. Blackbird actually getting Chrono Porting right next to the edge of the, of the Immutable Past. And Haiku trying to use that to harass. Finding Shin Turchers and the Shin Turchers Chrono Porter back from Vermind getting rid of that Blackbird completely. So there is not much that Haiku can do. Even as uppercut attempt getting completely foiled by a preemptive defense by Vermind with no real way of getting out of that and of course once this time it comes along that Blackbird won't even be there to fight in the first place so this is the game I think Vermind might not be aware of this base up here but as soon as he is it's going down and that'll be it that will be Haiku out of the tournament and Vermind fighting against Ferreter and yes Haiku is Haiku is double-checking time waves, double-checking if anything is propagated in his favor, but will be surrendering very soon. There is no way out of this. And that was bizarre. Like I said, this game does not in any way reflect the metagame. I think the players were still thinking in terms of version 1.2, still thinking in terms of hyper-economy and, and hyper-expansion, not in terms of fast early attacks and the fact that the economy takes a while to build up. But yeah, there is nothing there is nothing going for Haiku at this point. And this this is all interesting. I'm I'm glad something different happened. Even if it wasn't representative, it was still entertaining to watch. So I hope you enjoyed that, and we're gonna have Now we'll see. Well. Now we see that Vermine Vermine Haiku. So Veritor will be fighting her Vermine next. Whoever wins that will be fighting against J Raccoon. Wait, what? That's Oh. I see. <sighs> Apparently this wasn't the game to play next. Well, yeah. This is rather annoying. Sorry about that. Ignore that. There's, there's nothing there. Nothing there at all. I'll have to cast that game too. 
But anyway, good job to Vermind for for winning. And that was certainly an entertaining game. Be back shortly with J Raccoon versus Shaka, the other losers bracket match in Group S. And then from there we will have proper bracket results. See you all in just a couple minutes.